seconds remaining. What's up, guys, and welcome back to MPGL7. We're in the remaining. quarterfinals. We got Mineski. Currently a game up over Skyville and the Dire and Radiant, respectively. I'm Mike Loris, going to be joined by Danley Cast for the second game. And hopefully Raging Potato is here. But either way, game one was won pretty handily by Mineski, despite a Sand King that got quite out of control. Uh, Sand King cannot win the game by himself, turns out. So they really need Skyville some sort of follow-up from the rest of the team. I wish they had a carry that was able to really contribute during the previous team fights. That Spectre pick, we both didn't agree with it to begin with. And we can safely say that, well, I don't want to blame the Spectre here, but the Spectre just couldn't contribute anything mm -hmm. by the time Mineski was finished up with the game. So I would like to see something a little bit more aggressive. Unless they play a style of Spectre that is supposed to play aggressive. I've seen a, I've seen a couple of teams try it where the Spectre will haunt into team fights early. So instead of just sitting in lanes farming, pick up an urn and participate in the team fights early, which I think would have been beneficial for them, but maybe they were just hoping to just bring it into a super late game scenario with the Spectre. But there was yeah, like, game's the over. laning problem. The lane was Tusk and Abaddon. That's like damn near impossible for a Spectre to deal with unless she has a lot of help. And the help wasn't really there, so like I think I think that is a pretty big problem. Spectre Disruptor is just a weak lane. So I don't think you could it's not like just the Spectre as a problem. She's like one of the problems. The lack of support was another one. Add them together and you have no lane up against Abaddon, who's just going to be bullying any other melee hero no matter what. So uh, they needed they needed a better safe lane. And whether or not that involved a Spectre, that you know doesn't really matter because their lane wasn't really going to succeed uh, with that that weakness and the lack of support. Because Sand King was like not a support in that game. <laughs> he was killing things. He was considered a support when we first saw him, and then all of a sudden he just sort of promoted himself without permission. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm wondering, does Skybill pick up the Sand King again? Unless Mineski has to prioritize the Sand King ban. Because honestly, this hero is very versatile. I would not mind Skybill picking him up again, but hopefully just maybe changing the playstyle a little bit with the Sand King. Or I guess you could do the exact same thing, just maybe, you know, try to give some of the kills away to your other teammates instead of hogging it all for yourself. Yeah, it's as fine. powerful as the Sand King was, I don't really think, it, like, no matter how well it's played, it's a first ban worthy hero, maybe second ban phase, uh, if Mineski are really scared about that. But, I mean, Sand King did everything for his team last game, got all the kills, and then just couldn't do anything with it. So that's like... Are you really scared of that? Are you really scared of a hero that can kill you a couple times, but then not continuously kill you off? There are heroes like a Queen of Pain, like a Slaughter, who can do the exact same thing, except punish you throughout the entirety of the game and just, you know, never, ever stop. So I think those are the heroes that uh, Mineski have to be a little bit wor more worried about, but they're going to grab a Tusk first, much like in game one. was a pretty good start, so yeah, Mineski probably just going to keep in their comfort zone. And Skyville going to switch things up at least a little bit. Beastmaster Ooh. Chen... This is some pushing Instant. stuff right here. Lone Druid Instant for sure is the next pick. Oh god, I <laughs> I would not mind a Lone Druid pick. This is literally the zoo strat from Skyville. So they decide to just open their doors wide for a zoo. I guess they just invest all their gold into it. But how strong do you think the zoo strat is with the Beastmaster Chen and maybe if they pick up a Lone Druid? What are your thoughts on the zoo strat? I think it's not really that strong when you first two pick them. Like if you pick a like a vengeful spirit first, and then I don't know some some other pseudo pushing hero, like a mid laner or something like that, or like a venge beastmaster opening. It like does indicate that you're going to go for push. But now with this indication, this is as clear as freaking day that Skyville want to play this aggressive style. So they're going to have to work through all the rest of Manessi's picks, plus the bans from Manessi, which are going to be targeted directly to countering the strategy. If you pick up like a Chen second phase with some other pusher second phase, then it gets so much better. But right now, Manessi, you're going to see this coming a mile away. And Tusk and Zeus are not too terrible at handling this. Uh, they're not great at killing off the Chen creeps right now or anything like that. But as far as fighting early, Zeus is the one you want. In this game... I don't know why, my gut feeling is just sort of pushing towards a Jakiri here. Potentially either Skyville or Maneski picking themselves up. Jakiri is probably one of the best supports when it comes to counter push. Especially if he picks up an Aether Lens, you've got the increased range and damage and your dual breath. And especially in the Zeus strats, there's, 
the summons are actually quite fragile. So there's a chance that obviously Jakiri can farm this while trying to hold off a push. Now Jakiri is not a typical support we normally see. Sometimes you're seen as a safe lane farmer, also seen as an off lane. But I'm leaning towards Jakiri here for either side. I don't think we're going to see him, unfortunately. It's just a hero that I feel might work for either either team. You also got to look towards those summons. Uh, Broodmother, Lycan. Or, or Shadow, Shadow Shaman. Rewards. Uh, probably, I mean, it's a support that can push. So in that regard, very unique. But uh, you really want to have heroes that can make things to get benefit from the Beastmaster aura. Shadow Shaman is not one of those heroes. So, you know, not, not a perfect pick in all aspects, but it can definitely get the job done. It's one of the few supports that can push. And now they have a Juggernaut, so it doesn't look like it's going to be anything Dyer super team. cheesy. No Lycan Broodmother uh, strats here. But still, they have the sustain. They have the Juggernaut Healing Ward. They have the Chen. They have the push power from the Chen and the Beastmaster. So for Mineski, they're going to have to be on the defensive pretty darn quickly. The mid lane's still open here for Skyville, but uh, Mineski... Do they have enough counter push for this? Do they have enough early game fighting? Uh, I feel like a gyrocopter probably is their best bet as a fourth pick. Yeah, gyro would seem reasonable here. He can also use the cooldown to potentially farm up some of the weaker hate, uh, the weaker creeps, or at least the weaker zoo zoo animals pushing onto the tower. So gyro would be a great pickup. Um, Darkseer would actually be a bit of a hindrance for the summons as well. You just put the Ion Shell and it's already going to force one away. Keeper of the Light? Mm, I don't think no. I have to go that hard for it. Like, Keeper of the Light is not that great versus these this draft now from Skyville. If it was the Lycan and Broodmother and whatnot, then get Coddle, but uh, I don't think... I think it's too late for that. Ember Spirit, The Blind though. would still be useful, though. Because you, you have to consider there's going to be so many summons that the Blinding Light would be a very useful spell this game. That is true, but that's also level 6 Keeper, and it's not good versus Juggernaut. He's on a horse, man. He just rides away into the sunset. He's not that fast <laughs> for a guy on a horse. Okay. I don't know how old he is, but his horse has got to be like He's... at least just as old. But Ember I was going to say the, the horse is anyway. probably older. Skyville do have a lot of answers to an Ember Spirit, like Shadow Shaman, Beastmaster. These are all good heroes to have. But Ember Spirit, Darkseer, that is that makes Ember Spirit just a ridiculous hero as far as fighting early on. Sometimes it's a little bit lukewarm, but when he has a Darkseer behind him and a Tusk, then Ember Spirit can definitely get into the mix of things. Yeah, so the combo is going to be here for Mineski. We presume it's going to be a final support pickup here for them, unless it's going to be a support Zeus, which isn't the great. I would like this to definitely be a core Zeus. Final support here for Mineski. What heroes would you be looking at here? Hmm. Do they need a more team fight oriented support, or would they need something more along the lines of a utility support to fix up this draft? Bounty Hunter's already banned out, but getting any sort of hero that can pressure the Chen, uh, kind of roam around and mess with the enemies, maybe even not to a degree where you get a kill, is going to be very useful. Uh, I'm not sure if you really want to go for like a Night Stalker or an Undying here, but uh, those types of heroes would be kind of at a premium here for the Mineski side. Skyville's last pick, DK. Gonna have a rough time versus the Zeus for sure, but man, he can push like nobody's business. So Skyville are going all out, trying to end this game early. Uh, yeah, no Hero Scream is great up against Dragonite necessarily, but uh, for Mineski, they could also maybe grab a Lich. Can they get away with the Lich right now? I'm probably leaning a little bit more towards the Bane. I was thinking here for Mineski that mm. if they're not going to win in the push department, at least try to get a bit of a head start during lanes. And that's where Bane comes in, just to set up for the Darkseer, for the Tusk, or just go for complete teamfight madness with a Magnus. Are they going to do something weird to the lanes here? Because um, Magnus looking like he's going to go mid. That's, uh, that's Support Zeus. territory right there. Support Zeus is... I, I want to say the downside of picking up a Zeus super early. Because they just, like, I guess didn't want to have Zeus in that situation. And Zeus played as support is always kind of, eh. Like, he will have enough to at least mess with Skyville. But not having the mana pool early on is really going to be difficult for Zeus to sustain his fight. Because he needs to be fighting early and very often. And if he runs out of mana, he's completely useless. It's Jules that's going to be handling the Zeus, so I'm wondering if they're going to be playing this more of as 
more as a farming support up until he reaches level six and then Jules becomes active. Because that's what they did with the Shadow Shaman. Like, obviously, Jules is more aggressive with it because he had the tools, but this time running a Zeus, he needs farm time. So maybe they play it like a Visage, have him in lane until he hits level six, and then he, t uh, then he starts to roam around and help his allies. Well, outside of that Zeus, they are going to send the Magnus to the mid lane, expecting the DK. And this is, you know, probably dream scenarios for both those heroes. DK does have to be very careful about getting too close to the mag, getting skewered back. But Magnus is going to know that this lane is coming, grabs a Quelling Blade first. DK does not have the same, so it's going to be maybe a little bit difficult for the DK to outlast hit Magnus regularly. But yeah, the Zeus, is he needed to really pressure and kill off this Beastmaster? Uh, I mean, with the supporting Tusk, who I'm assuming is going to end up closer to the top lane than bottom... They maybe can still kill off the Beastmaster without him, but it just seems like Zeus right now up against the Beastmaster doesn't really do a ton except for maybe snipe a, the Hawk occasionally. There's not much value to be had from that. Could be scary, actually. Zeus is a very weak lane support, so there's a chance also that Van could solo kill the Zeus if he's not careful. And that might force Raging Potato out of lane to defend the supports, which is the situation that you never want to be in. So Zeus could be a burden as well. We never know. We'll have to see as it is a best of three series. So one game already in Mineski's pockets. Will they get another one? Or is it going to be Skyville? We'll have to see as... I guess we could do team introductions. We didn't do it last game. So it would be nice if we just did some little formalities here for the teams. I'll start with Skyville. That's going to be on the Radiant side for today. Up towards top, we have Van handling the Beastmaster. Moving in towards the middle lane, we've got Kevs on the, uh, on the DK up against a very angry Magnus. And moving to towards the bottom, we've got Tim's on a Juggernaut. Much more active carry. Let's see if he's able to do something this game. On our Chen, we've got Nanatsu no Taizai. I guess that's an anime. I have no and idea. That's I the wrong I person. <laughs> Every time I see a name like this, I just presume it's an anime. Finally, we've got Grimtoe on our Shadow Shaman. Yeah, they're going to be going up against, right now, a dual lane. Jesse Vash, Tusk once again. Royer is on the Dark Seer. Over towards mid, Cuckoo is on the Magnus up towards top. Jules Zeus supporting the Raging Potato Ember Spirit going up against that Beastmaster. Bottom lane, definitely an interesting one. You have to watch out for the Shackles. Jesse Vash especially. He has no Snowball here. Grab Shards level 1. Perfect Chain Stun. He's going to get put into the Blender and dropped. Yeah, um, yeah, maybe if you're Dark Seer, you have a Surge. Maybe you can escape that once everyone's a little bit higher level here, but... As far as applying pressure to a Juggernaut, it's really, really hard because he has spin. And once he gets boots, it'll be really, really, like, almost impossible to kill off this Juggernaut with Ion Shells and Snowball. So would you say that the, that the Tusk has to rotate out of lane <laughs> to make up for the fact they can't do anything down bottom? Well, he's, maybe he's, he's top now, so yes. Yeah. What are your thoughts on maybe having Jesse Vash just bullying out the Chin in, in the jungle? Because... Tusk is not easy to kill compared to a lot of other roaming supports. So maybe Tusk could get away with har harassing the Chen oh, in this game. Gonna try and get a stun. Rio, well, he might be dead again. Beautiful stun. Oh my goodness. Second kill for Skyville. Well, yeah, I, I feel like that first kill really just set this bottom lane into a poor direction from the get-go. Juggernaut is out of mana right now and doesn't seem like they have any additional mana regeneration to give him, so... I guess that's kind of nice for the Darkseer, but uh, yeah, he needs to keep his eyes open for that Chen. I'm pretty sure this Observer Warrior should have seen the Chen coming. Maybe he didn't expect the Chen to come from that angle necessarily, but uh, Royer should not be super easily picked off in that regard. But this is the advantage of having a Shadow Shaman with boots first. You're able to just catch up to the Darkseer that much faster, and Darkseer probably doesn't have boots on the docket for quite a long time. It's Soul Ring first, then boots afterwards, and given his rate of farm, that's not going to come for a long time. It's rather interesting that Rio's decided to stay in the bottom lane as well, because he's not getting that much in the lane. He's dying a lot as well. So you, the rate at which he is sacrificing himself to get EXP w is not worth it at this point. So I was expecting Rio to maybe start doing some jungle stacks, pull them for himself and at least make up for the disadvantage in the jungle. But he's still hanging around in this bottom lane, which is rather interesting for me. Is there another reason why Rio is staying down here? I mean, him staying down here forces the Shadow Shaman to stay down here, I guess. But yeah, it does seem like he'll probably be getting a little bit more in the jungle, at least get his soul ring in the jungle. It's a pretty common move we see from Darkseers, especially in such a tough lane, just fall back for a minute or something, then 
Uh, eventually, the enemies will lose control of the lane. Then you'll get a tower's worth of creeps. And then, with the soul ring, you can actually keep shipping those ion shells down the wave and gets a lot better. But uh, maybe he'll still get the uh, soul ring pretty quickly with some lucky ion shell ticks. Uh, don't expect that to be happening, but you, know, you, you never know. In the meantime, over towards top lane, obviously Raging Pedro is going to have a great time up against the Beastmaster. That's a given. But bottom lane, this is not where you want to be as Royer, especially when his path is completely obstructed. He's going to net it down along with the Shackles, a little bit of layering there. Surge has already been used, however. Now Tim's going to come in with the spin. Royer's going to die for a second time in this bottom lane. Also, Cuckoo almost dying over in mid. So, Skyville's bottom lane is completely on lockdown right now. And giving acceleration to a Shadow Shaman in a push lineup is just disastrous. Oh, Rio, please, please just rotate into the jungle. I can all, I guess another reason why I stayed down bottom was to prevent any sort of push happening from Skyville, because if you see an empty lane, then you would instantly go for push. So maybe that's another reason as to why he's staying down there, so the Chen's not really able to accomplish that much. So <laughs> we haven't really taken again. a look at... <laughs> they, they could. Just kill him again, more gold. Easy for Skyville, but... Looks like for now I've got our Chen. Going to be roaming into the mid lane with his two favorite creeps, the Dark Troll Summoner as well as a Centaur Conqueror. They won't find Cuckoo though, as he is on his side of the map, so it'll be quite difficult to chase down that Magnus. So no banned. kill mid lane. He put a lot of damage oh. to Raging Potato right now, and Jules is completely out of mana, so he can't do anything to help out. Again, this is a very weak lane. I'm surprised Beastmaster hasn't gotten more out of this situation. Uh, they're going to stun up Cuckoo first, but he does still have the Skewer. I think that ping was from the Dire, so they should know that the Chen is right around the corner. And Cuckoo, yeah, he's going to skewer the right direction. Should survive. Oh, unless... Chen. No, no, he's, he's fine. Nope. Okay, Magnus, he's fine. Magnus <laughs> won't die to that. Un no. Unless. Unless he gets a courier instead. Nah, like it's too late now. I'm expecting him to just start moving to the Radiant south, and then he'll just get picked off. But no, he's going to live. But top lane, Raging Potato, he's still getting last oh. hits, but killing off Beastmaster is... Pretty much impossible. This guy's almost level six. Dragon form. Oh, they might, they might get cuckoo now. He's just gone back into the mid lane. So if he hits, okay, they they threw the shock wave. Uh -oh. Now Chen's coming through. Okay, skewer, cuckoo, though. you're in a lot of trouble. Run away. My skewer's Chen with him as well, though. Nah, cuckoo. They even disables just too fast, and they even cancelled the TP as well from Jesse Vash. They honestly could have. Oh no, I guess just having the tusk would not have been able to get a kill there. Cuckoo's not dead yet, necessarily, but he's still not doing fantastically, getting shoved out of the way. Van could die. Potato. He's going to eat a mango, go straight towards Van. Searing Chain's already used. Snowball in. Charge as well. Van completely stuck. And he's going to slow roast. Easy kill for the Ember Spirit there. Finally, Maneski get on the board, and it's with an Ember Spirit kill, so that's nothing but good things for them. Grim 2. Well, he's going to place a ward right under the mag. Doesn't exactly expect that to happen, but down towards bottom lane, Royer. He's going to put up an Ion Shell. You cannot race with the Blade Fury, though. Stomp is there. Royer gets Test of Faith. And the Blade Fury kills off the Ion Shells. And Cuckoo, in the meantime, Invis was spotted out by Grim 2's Observer Ward, so he drops the sentry, gets the kill on the mag. 5 1, and Skyville are just feasting on Mineski right now. And this time, Mineski aren't very clearly leading in CS, despite being behind in kills like last game. So, for Skyville, it's still a good situation, right? Even though they're not getting a huge amount of kills, they're going to be sitting somewhat in a very decent position. So Beastmaster's level 5 getting close to 6, whereas Rio, do not go back to the bottom lane. <laughs> Rio, what are you doing? Just, just, just stop, Rio. Just stop. Doesn't know when to quit. Now at this point, like you're a little bit more worried about the push since Chen is uh, a little bit of a higher level now. He has the... Uh, I mean, you should have 3 creeps soon, but uh, he will have that very quickly. So now Royer being on this bottom lane actually does make some sense, but... It's like, you've been on this bottom lane, feeding over kills pretty consistently for the entire time. Could have gotten so much more out of the jungle, but uh, this is, again, the dream scenario for Skyville. The only thing that's not going perfectly is the fact that Grim 2 isn't level 6 yet, but he's still very close to it. Uh, Chen's leveling up very steadily, the Beastmaster is almost at level 6, they'll have another uh, Dragon Form in a minute, so all of these factors coming together in Mineski, they needed to stop this from happening by winning the lanes early. That's exactly what didn't happen. They're looking for maybe a wraparound onto Van right now. Bird is going to see Jesse Vash, though. So Van should not be falling here. Bird snipes by Van? shards, but... Uh, sniped by the shards, but Jesse Vash still not really... Now without the shards, can't help out Cuckoo a ton. Can they turn this around? They have an RP, but 
I mean, RP can land on two, but now he's out of mana because he used Shockwave. Test of Faith is there. Snowball is coming in. Cuckoo is going to die beforehand, though. And now the Roar is on to Raging Potato. He does not have a jump out. He'll get dropped by the Axes. Jesse Vash slowed by the boar. Dragon Tail, it's up in two seconds. Jesse Vash has shards only. That's not going to help him. He can't even get it all because Grim 2 is going to arrive. Double kill for Kevs. And now this tower is going to drop like a rock. That was not the fight that Mineski were looking for. Oh my goodness, that went from bad to worse. If they didn't snowball in with Raging Potato, then Tusk and Raging Potato would have just been able to walk out of that free. They wouldn't have died. But because they wanted to make the commitment there, obviously not being the best decision, they lose their lives. And not only do they lose a T1, they're losing a T2. Is there a chance that Skyville puts pressure on the T3 tower this early into the game. Juggernaut gets a kill under the Zeus as well. So Mineski's still losing heroes. He could lose Rio as well, but they're bringing Potato and the Tusk in to try and punish Tims. He's got no mana for spin though, so he could die. He's got one charges. It's on cooldown anyway, so Tims will die, but the rest of his team, T2 taken. Do they go high ground? Uh, there's half dragon form left. I think uh, you could like hit the tower once just for value reasons, but uh, definitely going for the bottom lane, or the, the side oh, lanes. Oh, they can get Raging attractive. Potato. Oh, not DK like stuns, they get the stun. Do they have another disable? Do they have another disable at least? Oh, they get the shackles off. Raging Potato's dead. Oh, this game is terrible for Mineski right now. Absolutely in shambles. This is uh, not that good for them. Uh, Natsu's getting pretty big. He now has maxed out uh, Persuasion. Serpent Ward's used in a... I guess they get the kill on the Ember Spirit. That's fine. Whatever. But, um, Skyville, they are not gonna stop. They have a book coming up on Van and the amount of threats on the enemy side. Like, are, are there any threats? Like, they're only getting kills. The only two kills they've gotten was because one hero was out of position with no backup incoming. And they just had a vast outnumbering of uh, heroes there, but in a full team fight basis, even if Skyville get hit with a five-man RP. I don't think there's enough damage to actually kill off everyone in the duration of that, or even take a great fight afterwards. So Skyville can just go and take all these towers. First, it's bottom lane. There is no dragon form for another 10 seconds, but I don't think the DK really cares because with the healing ward, no one's taking any damage. And I don't think there's any trades in sight for Maneski. Maybe they can try to go for mid, but already it's a one for nil. Now dragon form gets popped, so that indicates they want to go for high ground in this bottom lane. If they I think take they probably mid, go ahead and do it. If they take mid, they have to sacrifice the T2, which is obviously going to go down regardless. So if they don't make this trade, they're not going to make any trade. So now they, they're Rocher high ground. Looks, I think Rocher just be the safer option. But it seems for now, Skype is a little indecisive. We've got Kev's just sort of going back and forth, back and forth. What do we do, team? And it looks like it should be Roche. Unless they don't want Roche. No? I guess Roche isn't that attractive right now. Well, Maybe they just want to take all the towers first, take the top T1 and T2. They, they definitely could have killed off Roshan, trading away a tier 1 top lane. Like, it's not a huge loss, in the uh, so it's whatever, they can give that away. But uh, still, it's not the worst thing in the world since they st still do have the Chen army intact. Chen one-shot buys a mechanism. They're going to snowball onto Grim 2 right now. Roar is there to interrupt. Here comes the Ember Spirit, chains into two, vacuum as well. Grim 2 going to fall first, Van. With the Ion Shells, and there's not enough lockdown here. They'll grab the Shadow Shaman. It's something for the Mineski side, but Shadow but Shaman Wall will be up down. in just another 20 seconds. He could teleport to the top tier 1, and then just straight push the tier 1 and tier 2 top lane. Uh, that pickoff isn't really going to change how this game is going to play out. And you also have to remember, they, they use a wall for a support kill. So they're not, they're not making the most of this Darks here, unfortunately. Like, yes, it's level 1 wall, yes, it's level 1 vacuum, but they need everything that they have to put together the best possible team fight for them. Because you said this a lot in this game. It's very difficult for Mineski to have enough damage output to kill everyone on Skyville because they've got so much sustain with the mech as well as the Chen. And the healing ward as well. Like, the heal on the side of Skyville is ridiculous. So the damage output is not going to be able to compare unless they get some items onto Raging Potato. And you can even say to a certain degree, like, Jules is going to have to start performing on this support Zeus to do the damage, because no one else is. He'll have a bolt, and that's about it. Uh, Zeus as a support can do a lot of damage if he has a lot of frontline. 
And you would think, you know, with the Darkseer and a Magnus, the front line would be decent, but it's just not comparable to the fact that Skyville can just dive in with all of their creeps and the Chen army and the boar, the zoo, kicking into full gear, especially once this book comes up on the Beastmaster. They're going to very quickly lose this tier 2. There's no healing ward this time, so the creeps are actually taking some damage. Healing uh, Cannon Gods are being used, but now Kev's going to circle around with the Shadow Blade act. Jesse Bash almost going to get completely soloed by the Dragonite. Snowball's going to save him for a couple seconds, but not enough. RP onto a whole bunch of Thunder Gods Wrath as well. Going to get an instant 3 kill for the team. Jesse Bash somehow still alive. Van now going to get chased down, and Skyville maybe have pushed too far because they're going to lose 4 heroes for nothing. Mineski somehow holds. That was uh, a little bit kind of uh, scattered there from Skyville. You either go for the tower or go for the fight. Losing your Chen, uh, losing your mechanism and Hannah God before the fight even starts already puts Skyville at a significant disadvantage. Chen had to use the spells prematurely. Mm -hmm. So after, before, even after the RP was thrown, it was just too late. That was terrible for Skyville. That's probably one of the worst situations to have. So Mineski get... A nice bit of gold in their pockets, not enough to say that they're comfortably back in this game. You have to say that Mineski's still in a position where they need to win a couple more team fights decisively to come back on a level where they'll be even to Skyville. But it seems like for now, Skyville's just content on going for this straight push. There's just nothing stopping them. They've gone all the way back up top. So push is going to happen again, whereas for Mineski... No tower trades in sight. They could try and go for a nice little snipe on this bottom T1, which is which is very low. So if they do want to grab that, they can. But I think for now, just put a lot of emphasis into trying to defend the T2 up top or try and go for another team fight. Mind you that there is no RP for 34 seconds, so the T2 will drop. Mm -hmm. No RP means no fight for Mineski. Even though there's not the most follow-up in the world, they, they need that stun, at the very least, just because it does stun. Like, that's the bare minimum of that spell, so uh, they need to have that up, and it seems like uh, Skyville, they are not going to slow down. Surfer Ward's now deployed. They isolate Kev's out, Jules throws a bolt here and there, chucking a little bit of lightning. RP's up in 9 seconds. Oh, Magnus is so close to being level 2 RP, he needs that extra cooldown to re uh, reduction. The RP is now up. RP the up angles down. aren't quite there. Tim's going to get a little bit isolated out. Serpent Ward's still protecting him, however. Now they're going to work onto the Raxes. They're a little bit clustered up. Cuckoo looking for his angles. Now the angles are just non-existent. Like, you cannot get the Dragonite and Juggernaut with this RP. they got to try to cluster them up a little bit. They have no good way of killing off these Serpent Wards. The Range Rax and Melee both dropping RP oh! only onto one. Straight into a wall. So, I mean, that would have been great if it landed on more heroes. Now the Magnus can get torn to shreds. Tim's gonna dive in. Thunder God's Wrath can do some damage. Jesse Bash gonna get shackled off to the side with the Blade Fury there. Jesse Bash is barely gonna slip away. No, gets shocked to death. Rage Potato's gonna dive right in. Lots of fire damage. We'll kill off the Juggernaut. Grim 2's like in the corner. We'll also roast to Raging Potato. But they've already lost the melee Raxes. They're gonna buy out on the Tusk. Look to catch Natsu. They'll catch him with the shards. Well played by Jesse Bash, but it's a large price to pay. They're gonna get three for two, three for three, three for two in the end, but. The damage is now done. Top lane completely devoid of Raxes, so it was a great fight, I guess, for Mineski in the end, but it was way too expensive. And unfortunately, now you have to consider the fact that Roche is going to be significantly easier for Skyville to take if they want to go into Roche now, just because the top lane's pushing. It's just so far away. The only hero that I can see being able to comfortably make it to team fights is going to have to be the Ember Spirit. Leave a remnant up top or even farm up top, Brita travels down bottom, try and come in for a team fight. Although, unless he dies to a DK who's under the cover of Shadow Blade, but it seems that Raging Potato, playing super safe, just knows something's wrong and rightly so as he gets out with his life at least. Well, this game, Mineski's looking pretty hard. They almost have a battle theory on Raging Potato, and I mean, it's, it's always a good item to have an Ember Spirit. It's not going to completely bail them out, but at least it's going to give them some sort of significant counterplay, so, some sort of punishment for Skyville when they go for the second set of Raxes. So that that is a big item pickup for the Ember Spirit to have. I don't think anyone else... Actually, no, no, the Darkseer is almost at his Blink Dagger. I think that should be his next pickup. So once they get that... With RP and Vacuum and a Battle Fury on Ember Spirit, plus Empower, which is level 3, might even be level 4 by the time the next fight rolls around, there's definitely a much higher chance for Mineski to take just a clean, decisive, you know, 4-man RP and to kill everyone immediately, like we saw previously in the top lane, but the RP has to land, and that is potentially very difficult. Cuckoo, though, he has Vision to Roche, at least a little bit provided by the Sigil. 
A little bit of extra vision from the bolt, but the Ember Spirit's nowhere nearby, and he's not that healthy, so they're gonna have to give up Roche. Not even Ember Spirit. If they just had the Magnus as well as the Darkseer, then I think it would oh, be much more. Jesse oh, Bash. too late. Stop the though. snowball somehow. Put the brakes on. Oh, yeah, that's not where you want to be. No. So, well, at least it's just a tusk, right? 35 seconds off the map. He'll be back for the next high ground push, but this is not a position that you want to be in if you're Mineski. If it just keeps going on like this, we are definitely going to move into a game three scenario as Skyville was just. They're steamrolling over Mineski. You could say for both games, would you say that Snowball or at least Push has been the prevailing strat so far? Yeah, I mean, it's not really surprising. That's kind of how Dota is right now, which is not that exciting to watch, I guess. Unless, I guess it's a little bit more exciting for Mineski. Oh, Blink Forward Warriors gonna get three man vacuum. RP is there as well. This time, however, the Chen is ready. Skewer back, and it's gonna be enough damage to kill off three. That's the Aegis as well. Tim dropping super low will die to the tower. And Rage Pedro is still alive with the Iron Shell, doing so much damage with this Battle Theory. It's Kev stuck on the front line, taking bolt after bolt after bolt, will die to Jules. Snowball forward, gonna catch a Natsu. Chains, it's available, it's gonna lock the Chen down. Five for two exchange. And Mineski hold. The Serpent Wards, they're gonna do a little bit of extra damage to this tower. But for the most part, that is exactly what Mineski need. A Blink Dagger on the Darkseer, setting up so that the Mag can land that RP. And Skyville just need to separate and avoid that. It's very easy to avoid in theory, but and once you get hit by that once, it's going to be real hard to not get hit by that again. It just felt like they didn't respect this team fight potential from Mineski. You looked at the way Skyville moved up onto the high ground, they had the DK going up, trying to hit things, and all of a sudden dropping down to less than half HP right off the bat. And then having the surprise RP coming from the backside. So Skyville, they just get heavily punished. You've got Raging Potato pushing the bottom lane with his completed Battle Fury as well. This is actually a really good timing for Battle Fury and Raging Potato, considering the circumstances of this game. And he has Crystallis now, so even more damage. And given how many units Skyville has, a single Sleight of Fist is going to easily hit, like, what, five units at least? With Cleave and Crit and Empower, so I guess double Cleave. This Ember Spirit, if he doesn't get pinned down immediately by a Roar or like a Dragonite Tail, then Raging Potato is just going to go off like a rocket. And he could just safely sit behind everyone on the front lines, assuming the RP lands. Again, that's the big if. Roar has to keep landing those vacuums. And of course, Cuckoo has to keep landing those RPs in order for Mineski to hold. But we can see it's not impossible anymore as long as they, get hit with, as long as they land those ultimates. Oh, gosh. Um, I, everything you said there was right. For Skyville, I think the safest option here when it comes to pushing is just have either the DK oh. or the Juggernaut. Oh, they can grab a kill up top. Oh, Kev's yeah. is going to start the fight off, have a roar into Royer right now. He does not have mechanism. He already used it. Raging Potato is just going to bail. Okay, well, he wants no part in that. Uh, that is a good start for Skyville, but they unfortunately can't push immediately afterwards, so they'll be forced to wait for a couple more seconds. They still have another round of items coming up. Uh, the, the Beastmaster doesn't have Necrobook maxed out just yet, although it is going to be flying out soon. Aghanim is very close to completion on Chen. And the Juggernaut, let me just grab the Blink Dagger. Not huge in the straight-up push, but as far as getting the pick off on the Ember Spirit with the help of DK with the BKB, very possible. So Skyville, after this next set of items, they're going to be pushing that much stronger. And there really aren't that many items that are coming up on the Dire side outside of the Ember Spirit that's going to be super relevant. Yeah, what I wanted to touch on before is I would like Skyville for the next push to take it slow, right? They've got so much regen on their side that they can just have the DK go front, maybe hit the tower a couple of times, back up, heal himself up back up with the, with the dragon's blood, with the mechanism, and with this Aghanims that's going to be coming up on the Chen as well. Just take it slow. There's no rush for Skyville to win this game because if Mineski can't get their spells off the way they want them to, then unfortunately Mineski's just not going to win the fights. That, that's plain and simple. It's, it's, mostly, it's mostly been the vacuum wall RP combo that's been completely sweeping Skyville. So if they, if they just don't get caught out, take it nice and slow, then I think Skyville has this game in the bag. Yeah, just wait for these items also. Like, Chen is only... Yeah, he's not that far away. 500 gold away from the Yeah, Aghanim I would sector. like to see the uh, eggs. Get, well, they have the BKB. They have the maxed out book. Yeah, so they have almost all the items. But getting items on the Chen... You can just hand of God spam kind Every of to seconds, keep Kevs yeah. alive in the front lines and 
do something very similar, but they're just gonna shove right in again. And again, look at all these units. Kev's gonna get dropped so low. Vacuum wall only out to Kev's. Can they kill off this DK? Roy gonna get focused down with the tail. Mechanism can keep him alive. BKB now pops up on the Dragon Knight. Blink RP again only onto one. All the ultimates are down for Maneski, so this is gonna be super hard mode for them. Kev's does lose his BKB. In the meantime, Tim's is way deep in. He's gonna blend down the Zeus. They also, well, catch a lot of damage on the Grim too. Tower's still alive right now. Cuckoo, he only has a Blink Skewer, but he's gonna get sheeped up beforehand. Rage Piedo. Doesn't have enough damage with the Slight of Fist, although no, will kill off the Shadow Shaman, but gets immediately Dragon Tailed afterwards. He's gonna jump out, however, the tower has already fallen. Ban very, very low right now, and the wall is still kind of deterring them from moving forward significantly. The melee Rax is gonna be focused down, but it will not fall. In fact, not much damage sustained there. Not a terrible hold for Mineski, considering how poor those ultimates were. It's not terrible, but that's just what Skyvale wants. Just do as much damage as possible, minimal casualties, and again, if the RP doesn't land, there's no way Mineski is gonna have a good way into this fight. It's not like they have a Tidehunter Ravage, there's no Stampede Hoof Stomp combo, there's just nothing that's really gonna help them get into the fights easily outside of the RP vacuum. So, it's just Skyville, just take it slow. There, there's no rush in this game. There is no rush available for, actually the real time is gonna pop up in about two minutes. So I'm curious to see if it's going to be an early Roche or a late Roche. Because if it's early, it's good for Skyville. If it's a later Roche, though, it's going to give Mineski time to get those items and really become a threat for Skyville. Especially the Ember Spirit, because even with these items, we saw the amount of damage you can do if he gets those crits in. And power at this point is still not maxed out, so he'll have a little bit of extra damage coming out from that mag. He now has his Daedalus. Something like a Blink Dagger on DK will be absolutely massive here just to jump on the ember spirit make sure that he doesn't have the chance to constantly get those sleight of fists out and should skyville want to go for roshan that's actually it almost seems like it's more dangerous than if they tried to go for high ground because if they go for high ground they have the luxury of doing it super patiently just you know chuck a couple of right clicks on it back off heal with the healing ward wait for the cooldowns if they go into the roche pit they're automatically going to clump up against the dark seer and mag they can probably do it with just the Juggernaut DK or like the Juggernaut Beast Mask, something like that, but in the Roche Pit, it's so much easier to get hit with the RP than it is pushing up high ground, which they can do so slowly. So that might be what Skyville are looking to do, get the double life push in again, but that might just be their undoing if they are spotted. And with the Zeus and a Tusk, Mineski should see a Roshan coming. Yeah, absolutely. But if Skyville gets these bottom Raxes, Defending Roche gets a lot harder for Mineski because they then have to start pushing out the creep wave. So let, let's see what Skyville wants to prioritize first. Are they going to go for the Roche first or are they going to try and get some lockdown or at least lock down these, uh, these Raxes to get the two lane advantage? And it looks like it's going to be the Raxes. Just go. Two is going to drop down a half HP from one slight of fist. This time there are Ancients in the front lines. They get a stun onto Jules right now. Lots of damage, but the Guardian Greaves, they'll keep him alive for a little while longer. Cuckoo got Omni Slash off to the side. However, with the Shadow Blade, he will survive for a little while longer. He's healthy enough to reinitiate, but the Raxes are still taking a beating from the Chen Creeps. They'll isolate Kev's away, but they've already lost the Raxes. Vacuum back. Thunder God's Wrath. The Dragonite is just not dying right now. Gets mecked up. Now the Ronda Cuckoo cannot get his RP off, and he'll die to the Dragonite damage over time with the help of the Chen. Tim's, he's taking a lot of damage from Jesse Vash the Iron Shell. He'll drop as well, but it's a one-for-one -one trade. Jump in from Rage of Potatoes. They're going to pick off the Dragonite, but again, the damage has been done, much like how we saw in the top lane. They may or may not catch Grim 2 right now, and it looks like they probably will. And oh, they'll fail to kill off the Chen with those chains. Grim 2 needs his blink out. Oh, he's not going to get it. The damage over time is now kicking in from the guard, and Grim 2 is going to get two shots. So, yeah, they get a couple of kills, I guess, but it's just way, way too freaking late. Skyville are now two Raxes up. Game isn't necessarily over, but it's kind of looking like it. Skyville are just getting these objectives down pretty regularly. Skyville would have to win the next three team fights in a row to really have a way back into this game. They put everything into the Raging Potato Basket, which, you know, it's fine. It's an Ember Spirit that hits ridiculously hard, but you also have to consider, you kill Skyville. How quickly can you push to capitalize on that space? And unfortunately, if you're Mineski, they don't have the best draft when it comes to pushing. They've still got to go through T2 Towers before they go for high ground. So even if they win, if they win one or two fights, that's not enough to really get them back into this game. If they can get three at least, and get some of those bigger items, maybe even have to pick up a Desolator on someone like the Tusk or the Magnus to make pushing better, then I'd say Mineski has a better chance in the game. But so far, as you said, it's not looking great. 
sustain kicking in from Skyville. They're shoving all the waves out, and yeah, like Mineski, they may or may not find themselves in a position where they're not going to be losing, but not losing, as I always say, is not the same as winning. They have to get into the enemy base, and that is probably going to involve like a, a clean 5 nil at the very least, plus forcing some buybacks and getting those kills as well if they're actually going to win that push, or w uh, win that trade and actually push successfully. Like, so many things have to go right for Mineski to have a decisive lead in this game, but catching Kev's, first of all, that's a good start. They're going to see the Dragonite. Chains do not land, however. The Dragonite's just going to Shadow Blade away. That was a big opportunity for them, and now it's pretty much gone. Yeah. Jules even tried to hit the tree line to see if he was going for a TP, but that wasn't quite the case. Roche is up, by the way. This was scouted out by Mineski. They even sent the sigil in earlier. So Roche is up. Mineski knows. Does Skyville... I, I suppose Skyville would assume that the Roche is up at this point. But you look at how Skyville's playing. They're sort of spread out. And they should have seen Grimto. Dragonite. He's going in. Also see Van. Huge hits! Um, Grimto and Van are going to get vacuumed back. Double kill instantly for Jules. Now Kev's going to arrive with Tim's Omni Slash only to Cuckoo. No, Omni, no, uh, no RP for this fight. But I think the damage for right now is good enough. Oh, not good shards. Raging Pedo can't jump over it either. Is going to searing chains or something. It's still a two for one at the end of the day. And killing off those two heroes, even after losing Mag, is going to mean that Mineski's base is not going to be pushed until those heroes are back up alive. So, oh, can they kill off Tim's right now? Huge hits from Raging Potato, but not quite enough damage. But still, Mineski keep their base from being pushed for however long. And that's worth it. They're delaying the game. But there has to come to a point where they need to make something happen instead of just defending their base the whole game. Because if you can't leave your base, what are you going to be able to do? So, yeah, they get the kill on the Beastmaster and the Shadow Shaman, but they can't really make too much happen because they're consistently being pushed in by the both bottom and top lane super creeps. Which is, as I pointed out before, it's just difficult because Mineski can't focus on killing heroes anymore. They also have to consciously think, is the creep wave going to push into our base if we make this move? Because if they leave the creeps, T4 is going to start taking damage, and the next fight Mineski takes badly, there's a chance Skyville can just completely bypass the mid raxes and go straight for T4s because of the amount of push potential they have as a team. It almost seems like Mineski, they have to keep getting picks just so that their base isn't going to get pushed. Once Skyville actually assemble a full Chen army, it's like half Chen army right now. Centaur is pretty good still, but you need more Ancients. Uh, once that army comes up and once Skyville are once again ready to go in for a push, maybe once this uh, AC is completed on the DK, then like once they get to the front door, it almost seems like it's all over for Mineski. So they have to try to keep the waves kind of near the river area. If they can do that, that in and of itself is a pretty big win. It's so, so hard to do, but it's a lot easier to do than I guess holding Raxus up against Skyville's squad. They're going to Thunder God's Wrath, see that there's a smoke going on. So they will be ready for this if it is going to come their way, but Skyville should know about this as well. So for now, it looks like it's going to be an immediate roast attempt from Skyville, oh. whereas Mineski, will they spot it out? I presume Jules, Sigil spots it out. Well, this and is really bad well, for Skyville, they have to get out. Oh, Tim's down to half HP. Look at all these creeps, look. they're so close. Kev's, he's charging in. Oh. Jewel's gonna get Omni Slash. Zeus, though, is gonna block most of it with the Ghost Scepter. Royer's gonna get focused, first of all. Can they bring him down? RP is gonna keep him alive for a little while longer. He can't get the vacuum off. He's gonna try to retreat instead, and he does end up going down while he's trying to retreat. Big Sleight of Fist from the Ember Spirit's gonna jump across the small ravine. Has another Sleight of Fist soon, and he's gonna jump again. Another Sleight of Fist will yes. kill off Grimsu, but he's getting worked down by the Kev's, and he'll die in the end. He's gonna buy back, immediately jump into this fight. If he dies now, it's just game over. And he's going to have one more spirit to jump to. The rest of his team slowly starting to get into position right now. Shard's going to come in, catch Kev's. But I think the Ember Spirit was holding a gem, which should maybe still be in the trees. Not sure if anyone picked that one up. But either way, Skyville do force the buyout on three heroes. So another big win for them. Again, they just have to wait for Juggernaut to be alive again. Then it's time to go in and push. The gem was on the ground in the lane, so I don't know what's happened to it. If someone's picked it up, if it's back in base, I don't see it anywhere. Gem oh. is still on the deck. There it is. Where? Oh, there it is. Okay, it's still there. Well, we'll, we'll see if anyone picks it up. I, maybe they just assume it's gone. I oh, know the courier's going over. Mineski knows. They need that for the DK at the very least. Uh, some value to be had from having that gem for Mineski. Uh, Dewarding is not super important for them, honestly, right now. Uh, the, uh, keeping their wards up would be fantastic if they can somehow do that, but 
Uh, Juggernaut's going to be up soon again. Mineski still keep their base from being pushed, but they just keep on getting initiated upon, and it needs to be the other way around. Once they are able to get a decent vacuum RP, like every single time we've seen a three-man RP, it's just been lights out for Skyville. But they've kind of been hitting with like a 20-30% rate, and that, at this point, is not quite good enough. Ember Spirit doesn't have enough damage to just insta-kill everyone. Skyville are going to smoke up again towards Roche. Again, this is the most dangerous thing for them to do. Royer is going to get warded, and he will blink out of there. But now he knows what's going on. Can they actually contest this? There is a blink RP. It'll catch three. Sleight of Fist going to drop oh. him low, but that just lets Skyville know what's going on right now. Blink RP is there. It's only onto one, skewer back onto oh. zero, and they're just gonna claim the Aegis. Jump in from Van now. He's gonna roar up Raging Potato. Sheep is there as well. He, his Flame Guard, though, is still gonna hold. And he's thinking about going in. Is still surged up, but has gotta is watch out RP? for this DK. Yeah, RP's down now, so I'm not sure how Mineski hold this. I don't think they can hold it, unless they get the vacuum wall into Slide of Fist combo of their life. There is no way that, that Skyville is going to be losing this high ground push. They take at least a T3 and maybe do half damage to the racks. Depends on how heavily they want to push here. Because there's no rush, again, no rush for Skyville to win the game. They are winning at a quite decent rate. Whereas, unfortunately for Mineski, they're too ultimate dependent now. They're just too reliant on getting those RP wall combos. And this is the unfortunate thing with their draft as well. If you're too reliant on spells, if they don't land, what's the backup plan? Cross your fingers for crits. <laughs> Cross Get a slight of fist, crit on every hit. Easy victory, can't lose from there. Uh, yeah, I mean, there are again, not really many huge items that Mineski can grab in this situation. Uh, it seems like this ultimate orb is gonna be a Lincoln Spear for the Ember Spirit, which is a great item to have versus Skyville for sure. Like you block a Dragon Tail, a Hex, or a Shackles, it's all good, but it's not really what they want. At this point, Ember Spirit, I think should just say, screw survival, I just need to be a complete glass cannon to try to kill all my enemies in one blow, because anything else is just not quite going to fly, so you can't really blame them for going for this, but I feel like the team is just in such dire straits that you need someone to just do all of the damage, because if it's not him, if it's not the Ember Spirit, then who is going to be doing the damage? No one, really. Yeah. Right now is divine time. He just can't afford it. So, <laughs> well... I don't think he's going to go for the Divine Rapier. Maybe they feel like they still have a chance in this game, whether it's going to be with the Divine or not. Unless they, they there is a the chance... Rapier. They they need the Rapier. But he's yeah. already invested in the Ultimate Orb, which is already a lot of gold in itself. Like, he's so confined to the base that there's just no way Raging Potato is going to be able to get the farm for a Divine by the time the Raxes drop. Unless they get a complete team wipe on Skyville while getting the Raxes, then... Then I suppose there's a chance he gets it from there, but even then with the oh, Divine, it's so... Oh, actually, Wall. it won already. Oh. Immediate destruction of the Shadow Shaman. Kev's BKB is up right now, and the tower's taking damage from the Serpent Ward. Someone has to clean that up. Tim's is BKB. He's going to use it to retreat. Serpent Ward's now going to be cleaned up, but the tower has already died. And Shadow Shaman, he's dead as well. So overall, for Skyville, that, that's a mission success for, for them. They don't bait out the RP, but still they get a tower, and still creeps are flooding the base. Mineski needs to have a much more convincing fight than that if they're going to claim victory. But still, that was a, a decent combo enough to insta-give the Shadow Shaman. Like, he didn't stand a chance to even try to Glimmer. That's just the wall vacuum combo, too. If you can get a small, if, you, if you can get a pick off like that on a Shadow Shaman, imagine what happens if there's an RP included, right? We've seen RP... I keep harping on about this. It's just, if Cuckoo can get the RP of his life, that might be enough to salvage the game. Even though they're in such a dire situation, pun not included, then there's still a chance here for them, right? Because even though you're running an Ember Spirit, it's one of the most explosive late game heroes that you could potentially see, obviously because of crit factors, and obviously he is a very good Divine Rapier carrier. Well, it's a Lincoln Sphere for him, so no Doctor yeah. just yet. How insane would it be for Skyville for their DK to pick up a Dragon Lance? First of all, thematically, there's that, but, like, if you just put him way down on the low ground and start sieging with his ultimate, that might actually be a use for Dragonlance. <laughs> but it's only when he's in the dragon form. Yeah, I mean, they're slow sieging, they have all day. I suppose, but it'll be painfully slow. It's like trying to kill Mineski with a spoon. I, I, think, I think they can make it work. <laughs> 
Uh, oh, he's gonna go find. Oh. oh wait, Raging Potato. No, he goes in the wrong direction. Raging Potato needs to go in the other way. Oh, Grim 2 is gonna almost RP. insta give. They land a huge RP, but Raging Potato's so far away already. They'll drop the Shadow Shaman. They'll drop oh, Kev super low. The lose Royer in the meantime. Tim's with the BKB is gonna go straight towards Jules. We'll chop him down. Kev's still alive in the meantime. Raging Potato's trying to duel up against the Juggernaut. He cannot win that duel. And well, the creeps aren't pushing in just yet. Raging Potato wants to go for Kev. Slight of fist. Searing Chains is there, but so is Tim's. Oh, Gets an instant Tim's. ultra kill. Cleaving through everyone. They lose the Aegis only. And now Juggernaut's going to grab the gem. There is no buyback on the Ember Spirit. That is good game. The RP came, but unfortunately the Ember Spirit was just a little bit too far away. That all started with a not so well placed Fire Remnant. Mm -hmm. Oh, rest in pieces, Jules. Oh, never mind. It's going to be Jesse Bash that dies. Jules will. He'll throw a bolt. That's fine. Just, oh, can they get the kill into Kev's at least? Just one consolation prize before the game ends. Okay, Got they it. have the DK kill. They, they can finish up. Unless they somehow kill Tim's. He doesn't have the Aegis, so attacking. he could die. Why? Okay, it's fine. Oh, real. Vacuum. Can uh, he kill Tim's? That, that he, should he be. He was spinning, but retreating instead of attacking. Raxes are still alive. It's not over yet, I guess. <laughs> If he was just, you could attack buildings when you're using Blade Fury. You can attack yeah. uh, anything that's not taking. Oh no, the backdoor Serpent Wards got him. Got sneaky, it. sneaky Mission. Shadow Shaman. Not even gonna get Mission. punished on his way out. Mission accomplished. I've got a Bash to pick up as well onto the Juggernaut. So no Abyssal Blade yet, but I think by the time he can afford the Abyssal Blade, game's pretty much over. One ranged Rax. Probably the worst Rax to have if you want to have a chance at coming back because there's no way to heal it unless you have a Treant Protector. And you're up against the Shadow Shaman who can just keep doing that forever. Yep. So Game just, just got One Serpent times. Wards, what, do 100 damage? Just do it five times. Easy. I don't even know how much damage they'll do to the buildings, but it's definitely enough to kill it off. So they have to make sure they kill off Grim 2 every single time before the enemies get to the base. And then have RP with the vacuum wall, with an empowered Ember Spirit to kill off everyone else. It's easy. Mineski's got, they've got this in the bag. Easy. God, I love, I love how you put easy in there when, in practice, it's not that easy, Mike. Come on. Yeah, I'm not being serious, Danny. Come on. I'm disappointed. Mike, just stop. Yeah, oh, okay. uh, Drop Bear let us know that the Dragonlands, three times the DK, has 100% win rate, so literally can't lose. Grim 2 is going to hit oh, with a little bit of residual splash damage. And a god is going to be negated by the Thunder God's Wrath, but still, that was just Raging Potato doing a sleight of fist. Going to find a couple of Chen creeps. Cuckoo is going to charge in there. The gem was picked up. Oh, RP is going to catch two, but he's going to cheat that before he can skewer. Raging Potato is going to finally arrive, but it's a little bit too late because Kev's already has BKB up. They're going to lash down Cuckoo, bring down the Magnus. And now everyone else is just going to bail on out of there. Big hits from Raging Potato. He's going to once again jump away. Blink up to the cliffside. Kev's going to give chase. But Raging Potato is still alive. He's not going to go down just yet. Another jump out. But now he's going to get roared. Four Staff is there. He's sheeped up and roared. Now Shackled down. Into the snowball he goes. He's still alive for a little while longer. But slowly but surely Skyville are getting closer to the Mineski base. Jules is going to get worked down by Tim's. Water Punch a little bit too late to save that Zeus. Another big sleight of fists from the Ember Spirit. But now he's going to jump out. Grim 2 does not have enough mana to cast the Serpent Wards. But the Chen Creeps and Juggernaut are going to work down the Range Racks. Back to Protection is active right now. So the Range Raxes are not super easy to kill. But they're easy and Enough. It's only Royer who can defend. Dragon Tail spin down. He's dead. And Ember Spirit's gonna arrive a little bit too late. So there was a chance, I suppose, before Megas. But once the Megas have been claimed, it's just all over. Skyville are gonna claim game two in a pretty decisive push game. Slow and steady. Very decisive push game. But 41 minutes in. So. There was a chance Mineski to come back, they just didn't quite get the opportunity to make it. Skyville did not make enough mistakes for Mineski to capitalize. It's just, if they got a couple of more RPs in there, then it would have been a better situation to be in if you're Mineski, but because they missed, I would say they missed two crucial RPs in high ground defense. If they didn't miss those two RPs, then there'll be more items on these Mineski heroes, and these Raxes would have required another push to really take them down. But unfortunately, it just wasn't quite enough. A couple of missed RPs, and that was it for Mineski. So for Skyville to take game two off of Mineski, this is quite scary if you're, you know, if you're Mineski. You shouldn't really be losing to a no-name team here. Mineski are always like this, though. 
sometimes <laughs> they're freaking brilliant other times they they just like fall apart without doing anything it's kind of just how Mineski roll but uh, i feel like if they have a good better early game that was like really set things off on a bad pace and it just never really got better a couple rps are great but uh you need to be a lot more consistent in the early game and that's where the zoo support was really a pretty big weak link 9 4 16 ended up with a good score but uh needed a little bit more to lock down the beast mass needed bottom lane to stop dying and Mineski could still be playing this game right now but uh they're not skyville are going to claim game two guys we're going to be moving over towards a game three asap i'm mike loris i've been joined by dan lee cast be sure to follow us everything is in the title on the upper right hand corner and we'll be right back for the third and final game of the day.